Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the Crops Drought Weekly Update for the week ending on September uh, 2nd, 2022. So let's take a look and see what happened in the previous week. We're going to start out, as usual, with the firm's U.S. Canada map, looking at the current fire condition across the United States. And this little fire we looked at last week up on the uh, South Dakota, North Dakota border still is showing. Uh, there's one that cropped up in the previous week over by Casper, Wyoming, that is 1,800 acres. It's called the Tank Farm Fire. So let's zoom in, take a look at that. And uh, here's Casper, uh, Wyoming, right over here, uh, Casper Mountain right here. This is a fault bounded uh, mountain. And here is what's called Tank Farm Fire. So let's zoom in and see if we can figure out why it's called that. You can see the outline of the fire, and if you see all these circles in the back, this, this is an area where there used to be an oil refinery, and these are where the storage tanks were set up. They have been all removed. Uh, when I lived in Casper back in the early 80s, and working in the petroleum industry, there were five refineries in here, and now I don't know if there's any. They have all been torn down, which is uh, amazing. Okay, so let's zoom out a little bit more. We've also been uh, following the uh, moose fire up in uh, Idaho. It is now 101,000 acres, 44% contained. And we can see that from last week, this area down here on the south side, the southwest side is, is growing. So the active fires are burning in this area. Again, you can see a number of smaller fires uh, out around. If we look, uh, we'll use MODIS and see if we can see some smoke. And yes, indeed, we can see heavy smoke. So in the past few weeks, as we've been looking at this, it's been pretty heavy cloud cover and we haven't been able to see much smoke. But apparently today it is clear. And so we can see smoke filling the valleys coming in from fires further to the west. Uh, following the lows, seeping down kind of to the uh, southeast and then trailing into uh, Yellowstone National Park. Thin veil of smoke is visible uh, in West Yellowstone area, but by the time you get into the main park, it looks, uh, it looks clear uh, for the most part, but uh, maybe a thin veil. And then is clear as you get further to uh, the east. Okay, so you can see this prodigious smoke here. Where is it coming from? Well, here is uh, Washington State in the Columbia Plateau, and it's heavy smoke. And that is coming from the Cedar Creek Fire in Oregon. And you can see this smoke trail just moving straight north, and then just gets caught up in the upper level winds and starts blowing off to the east. And then it swoops down through, amazingly, uh, spreads out quite wide in the central part of the Columbia Plateau, and then squeezes down. Uh, through these gaps in the mountains over here and then filters into the mountainous area of Idaho and then of course is added to by all these uh, small fires that are burning out there. So we're going to keep an eye on this. It'll be interesting to see when the rains began, snows began, when these fires uh, get out for this current year. Okay, over to the uh, drought monitor, the, the map, uh, the slider. A map we've been looking at and again this map is looking at drought condition uh, we'll take a look at the schedule real quick so the deeper reds um, the exceptional drought and then down into severe moderate to none in the white so this slider bar we go from the current image which is august 23 to the uh, august 30th which was the last data point uh, for the previous week and uh, from what i've been able to determine is the changes are going to happen up here in the uh, around the Great Lakes area off into uh, Pennsylvania, New York, and out here in uh, these states over here that we've been seeing this uh, uh, severe drought area. So uh, as we move the slider through, we go from the 23rd to the 30th of August, and we'll see that red shrink. So the red went down, but the areas of yellow are going to increase through Pennsylvania and New York. And so this area has, has increased in drought condition. This is a slight decrease in these areas here, probably going to grow a little bit and some changes. But other than that, the rest of the country seems pretty similar as we move the slider through very, very slight changes in the extreme to severe drought conditions. Uh, the current conditions that have been holding quite steadily for the past uh, three weeks anyway seem to be holding again steady in this past week and so no 
uh, large changes in that so that this pattern of dry extending up through the central and northern Great Plains and then these areas off into the west uh, that have been droughty are still droughty. Okay, over to Vegscape. So looking at the NDVI, again, which is a satellite drive product, looking at the red and infrared bands and ratioing those in certain ways to look at vigorousness of crop growth. So the higher the value toward a value of one, uh, and the deeper the green, the more vigorous the plant growth and the more robust the plant condition. Uh, the more red and the lower number down into almost approaching zero is areas of plant stress and the deeper reds and yellows are usually bare ground, rock, bare soil or uh, some type of activity where the plant growth is being interrupted and that could be increase in water, uh, could be drought, could be floods, could be various other things. So this is what the uh, week ending 8, uh, 28 look like and you can see that again most of the corn growing region in the US is, is uh, showing vigorous uh, growth even down into Nebraska. A lot of this area down here uh, is irrigated. I'm not sure how much irrigation there is over here but I'm sure there, uh, there are some if, if not a lot. Okay so we go back and step through this daily starting with 827 and what we see is these gray bands in here these are the flash drought like daily drought cycles so uh, conditions change daily heat uh, too much rain, not enough rain, and we'll see these patterns move through almost like a weather front. And so there's the 27th, the 28th, and now this is moving off uh, to the east. Uh, and you can see a lot of uh, areas up here that are really uh, uh, dry, and it changes uh, day to day. Now the 29th, and here is the 30th. So 30th was not bad, a lot of vigorous growth going on in the uh, central part of the country. Uh, Texas now from the day before and, and for the next few days are going to be in this uh, kind of daily uh, flash drought conditions through this area and it stays that way through the rest of the uh, days that we look at through on a daily basis. So again the overall the week is like this. These areas to the west through Wyoming, Utah, Nevada and California have uh, this week uh, actually reduced a little bit in, in size and so possibly fall rains might be coming on uh, hopefully we'll we'll see if that continues okay the crop condition soil moisture analysis and this is looking at soil moisture and this again this is a satellite derived product and what we are looking at here is the week average from uh, August 22 to August 28th and changes in the uh, soil moisture condition in the upper layer and, and so this area, Nebraska, Kansas, down into Oklahoma, uh, is has shown a decrease in surface soil moisture, where all the deep blues are increases in soil moisture. So we've been kind of focusing on Texas a little bit, and because of the severe drought down there, but we can see that most of the state, the uh, the soil moisture has remained the same, with slight changes to the dry, and then down in the southern portions then it's increased dramatically and they have been receiving some precipitation down in that area. Uh, Utah, Colorado, uh, there's many uh, monsoonal storms coming through the southwest and that has been increasing soil moisture. My area up here is pretty similar. It's uh, very very slight changes to either the positive or the negative side. Okay, so what can we expect for weather over the next few days? Again, we're looking at the uh, GFS model, and this is a six-hour uh, uh, predictive model going from now, 6 a.m. on the 3rd uh, September, which is today, out for 384 hours. And again, it's a model, so the uh, probability of what you see on this map actually occurring becomes less likely the further we progress through here. So for today, uh, right now, 6 a.m. on the 3rd, this is probably quite likely. So let's grab this slider, we'll move it through, and I'm going to keep looking at uh, my area up here versus where the weather is. And so we should see that over the next several days and weeks that the precipitation is going to remain mainly from south, south Texas up through the eastern part of the U.S. and the west looks to be very high and dry. And so we're moving through, and again the rain uh, through South Texas up through uh, you know Tennessee and Kentucky and quite spotty 
coming and going, but nothing a low coming up through Baja, California, but possibly putting some rain in Southern California here out on September 9th. But again, the West, dry, 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 stays dry. Most of the country is dry. Looks like it's going to be dry. It's probably going to be dry. Oh, maybe not. So here are we, September 17. Okay, quite a ways out. Possibility of some rain touching up here in the northern Black Hills. That's quite a ways out. Might occur, might not, might be sooner, might be later, might be totally different. Okay, so when you get out to these dates out here, it probably doesn't mean much, but what we've seen is through the next two to three weeks, we can expect this central and western part of the U.S. to remain dry with storms moving daily, changing up through the south to uh, the east. Again, whether that's going to happen or not, uh, we'll just have to see. So usually, like this model, I like to use it for the next, for today and tomorrow and the next day and give an indication of what might be expected in two to three days and then just keep watching the model and if the trends hold, and get closer and closer to the day that we actually are living in, then the probability of these things become higher. So again, it's a model, it's fun to look at, and we'll keep watching this as we go through. So that's kind of the status of things today. Uh, hope you like this. So uh, hopefully you're in an area that's getting some rain. We're in an area that's not getting much rain, and it looks like it's gonna continue to be dry for a while. So uh, we'll keep watching and monitoring this as we go through uh, the harvest season, as harvest starts, we'll start looking at some products to look at what's coming off the fields, what the yields are. Uh, I just saw a train of combines move through Rapid City two days ago, about six or seven combines on trucks. Uh, so there must be some areas near here that are uh, starting to look at the wheat harvest. And we'll follow some of these through when I can find data for that. So thanks for watching. See you next week.